and welcome to another episode of Houston Art Tribe. I am Kay Sarver, and I am sitting here today with Catherine Colangelo in her home studio. And I am very excited to be here. I'm <laughs> I glad to have you. Yeah, I do this with every artist. I sort of think about <clears throat> either when I first saw their work or and or maybe met them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think it was the Diverse Works Workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, which do you remember what year it was? I was I trying know. to remember that. It was that. a long time ago. It wasn't 2008, was it earlier than that? No, Julian was like little, so it was yeah. probably early 2000s. He was born in 2002. Okay, yeah, so, it was yeah. a while ago. Yeah. See, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> I know, and actually that's one of the things I remember about you, is that you were you were on this thing, you know, with your, your art, but you had a, you were a mother, you had a small child at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, that impressed me. How did that play into what, you know, I mean, in terms of time and so forth, did you find it challenging? <laughs> well, it's always been challenging and it's still challenging, but I'm very uh, disciplined and so nice. I've always had to work and now mm -hmm. I work about four days a week. It's a little more than I used to work. Oh. But um, so I've always had a job and I've always painted at night. Okay. And I'm very good okay. about, you know, coming home and when he was little and he went to bed early, it was pretty easy because I would go yeah. to the studio and I always said, you know, he's going to go to bed at 7.30 when he's 17 <laughs> if I can help it. But of course now he's more self sufficient and he just goes and um, plays. He entertains games. himself. Yeah, so. But so. I do, I paint almost every day and I oh, always man. paint at night and I don't work on Fridays so that gives me a little more time but usually I'm doing life stuff, you know, yeah. but so art is usually at night and that's kind of my refuge to do my thing. So, I, I yeah. love that. I actually yeah. read that too, that you you said it becomes this meditation for you, mm -hmm. which when you look at them, I almost, it translates to looking at them for me. Mm -hmm. At least most of them I feel, I feel that. Mm -hmm. So you probably can't wait to get in here. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is the fun, the fun part of my yes. life. So. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous! I, I love that. That's just what keeps it you dri driven, mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to see. You know, um, you seem to work in series, uh, mm -hmm. more or less. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking about one that I saw. I think at Art League, it was the boats. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what inspired those? Uh, that was a you know. When you apply for something at Lawndale or the Art League, you have to propose a specific body of work. So you yes. kind of have to wrap it up in a package. But yes. um, that show was called Fleet for Abbey. Okay. And it was inspired by, I don't know if you remember, there was this kid, 16-year-old girl named Abby Sunderland. And she was attempting to sail uh, solo around the world. Oh my In her goodness, large yes. sailboat all by herself. And she got caught in a big storm in the Indian Ocean. And... It broke her mast, and she had to be rescued by Australian sailors, oh, and it was all in the news. So yes, it was kind of an interesting story to me because, first of all, like she just had like the guts to do this fabulous, <laughs> romantic, scary thing. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah. But then, like her parents were just like lambasted in the press, like how could you let your kid do this? First of all, and now like the Australian Navy is having to spend all this money rescuing oh your my kid, gosh. and you know, what a bunch of jerks you are. Yeah. And I was like, well, okay, so at that point, I can't remember, I think that show was in like 2011, so, yeah. okay. so my kid was about um, nine. Okay. And I was like, you know, it's such a tricky thing as a parent, because you like yes. want your kid to go out and have like these adventures in life, but you're yeah. afraid for their safety. So yeah. I thought, and it just made me start thinking about like, friendship also somehow. Like, so the, the boats in the show were, all these colorful sailboats yeah. that had like patterns and they all had a, a girl's name. I saw that. Yeah, so they were basically portraits of childhood friends of mine. Like they were all named oh after a girlfriend. Oh, that's, that's yeah. Fine. And um, the idea was that like if Abby wanted to attempt her journey again, she could have like a little flotilla of friendly sailboats that could be in the vicinity but not like right with her that she could call yeah. on if she had trouble. Oh, and so wonderful. it was kind of a meditation on friendship and parenting and and also, you know, my life is so mundane with work and parenting and housework and bills <laughs> that I was like, you know, I, I just was envious of the romance of the Oh my the journey, goodness, so, I know. That's, yeah. that's an impressive story. I'm glad you, I'm glad you took it and mm -hmm. a bit further and yeah. honored her in a way, you know, uh -huh. and 
women or girls. Yeah. I mean, just having the courage. Yeah. That's so cool. I didn't know that. I yeah. saw the, the girls' names, and I thought, I wonder what that's about. So, yeah. Well, and actually, yeah. recently, my brother sent me a link to an article. They found her boat. Nine years later, oh my gosh. they found her boat. I can't remember where it was exactly, but it hadn't sunk. It oh my was gosh. floating. Yeah. And the name of her boat was Wild Eyes, which I always thought was cool. But, um, and she's now like married with three kids and living in New Jersey. <laughs> like, oh man. <laughs> but she, she did the Wild Eyes. <clears throat> yeah, you sort of envision her, you know, going on to become an astronaut or right. something. Yeah. That's really cool though. It but... was something pretty normal. But... <laughs> That's okay. I guess that was her adventure for her. Yep, she for did. Now. She did it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say that having children isn't an adventure. Yeah, <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Different kind. <laughs> different so, kind. Yeah. Well, um, I know that really impressed me that that show and uh, but always, I mean, there's something about those patterns you that seem to flow through a lot of your work mm -hmm. that are reminiscent of of, of quilting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you ever? I actually think you did play with materials, didn't you, or fabric? Or um, I've worked with fabric sometimes. Um, I do I do have some pieces where I was working with fabric, and then I've also used stitching on the drawings sometimes. Okay. Um, and I've always loved textiles and mm. patterns in general, mm -hmm. um, and quilts to me are interesting because they have the patterns that I like, but they also have all the sort of nuances of domesticity and comfort yes. and warmth and yes. home. Um, and that the show I had at McMurtry that was in, I think that was in 2015, those were all based on quilt patterns. Yes. Okay. And they were mostly like kind of hard edge abstraction. Um, yeah. But they all used quilt patterns. And the thing I like about using existing, I mean, I would kind of combine a lot of them. Yeah. And the titles would sometimes refer to one of the original quilt patterns. but. I like playing with the colors on the pattern. So yeah. like you can you can take a pattern, an all over pattern, and you can paint it in many different ways. Yeah. You, know, you could paint yeah. it in a very predictable pattern or you can sort of like play games with it and mix up where the colors go to yeah. make it more interesting. So I kind of enjoy that exercise for myself just to keep mm -hmm. it interesting because a lot of the paintings take a really long time. Oh and my goodness. So trying to like kind of mix it up and challenge myself is something that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. That just, you know, make, you, you work with, is it gauche? Gouache. It gouache. gouache. Thank you. Yeah. Gouache is it's an, French. Yeah, it's an <laughs> opaque watercolor paint. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not permanent, is it? I mean, is it? It's like a... The gouache? The gouache in terms of... Color fastness or I, what? I guess so. Uh, does it run, for instance, like watercolors? If you get them wet, unless you, unless you, uh, put a finish on it. Oh, um, you mean if they got wet, would yeah. they get messed up? Yeah, yeah they would. Yeah, yeah, they would get messed yeah. up. Yeah, I thought so. So I mean, that's I, what I mean. I always used to work on paper, and they would be framed. Okay. But that was, you know, well, first of all, my husband had to help with a lot of framing and. I'm kind of tired of that. So I've been working on this muslin stretched over the wood panel. So they are exposed now, but you take away the glare of the glass. So you have yes. a more immediacy, oh, which I like. Yes. I'm not spraying them with anything because, you know, sometimes yeah. it'll blob out a thing and you can ruin a painting that took you a month. So yeah. um, some of the colors seem to have a little more acrylic content in them. Okay. And so That's some of I'm them wondering. are not re-wettable like watercolor, okay. but a lot of them are like watercolor where they're very, ch like a chalky version of watercolor. And if you got yeah. water on them, they would. Yeah, I didn't know sense. enough about it. I've mm -hmm. actually played with it before, mm -hmm. but if it has acrylic in it, it would yeah. make it more It depends on the, the brand. On the brand, yeah, yeah. So And I use all different brands. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I love, uh, well, just speaking of the ones with Muslim, okay, this recent show you had at Cindy Lissica mm -hmm, Gallery, mm -hmm. which was so impressive. Uh, I went back three times. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I just, uh, they, <clears throat> you know, I, I was very curious because Muslim <clears throat> is porous. Do you do something to treat it before you paint on it? Yes, or? I um, <clears throat> I use a clear gesso over okay, it. Okay, okay. And 
Usually I draw out the composition first in pencil uh -huh. and some of them will have like areas of graphite that are solid and so uh -huh. I was drawing it all out and if there were solid areas of graphite I would do that and then I would do the clear gesso and then I would oh, paint okay. the gouache. But I was having a lot of trouble with the muslin um, bubbling. Oh. So I would oh. do all this work and then <clears throat> put on the gesso and it would be ruined. Oh so I lost, like when I was working on this latest show, I lost like two months of work because I, I hadn't had this problem before. Oh my gosh. And I, all of a sudden these stupid bubbles started coming up. So then I started experimenting with um, using rabbit skin glue first. Okay. And um, so I would paint the wood panel first with rabbit skin glue. Okay. Then, okay. you know, let it dry, stretch my muslin. Okay. And then I would do the rabbit skin glue and I mean like really scrub it into the fiber. So I mean these are like really glued onto the panel. Okay. So I was like say. for conservation purposes, like you're not gonna get that off. No. You'd have to just take no. the whole wood panel off. Yeah. Um, and then I would use the uh, clear gesso over the rabbit skin glue because it okay. has a little bit of toothiness to it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. if you just try to paint on the muslin, I mean I usually wash it first, but sometimes there's preservatives or waxy stuff Something where it'll that... either beat up <clears throat> or it'll bleed. Oh, okay. So yeah, the gesso allows me to control the way the paint goes on. Yeah, I mean, as an artist, you know, too, you always wonder when you see somebody use material, mm -hmm. materials, uh, media, how they did it. So that is, that mm -hmm. is unique. And yeah, yeah, the fact that it's so flat against the panel, mm -hmm. so perfect. And the organic uh, forms, um, mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting how you, you sometimes you are more geometric and sometimes you, you allow more of what looks to me like nature coming mm -hmm. into the, to mm -hmm. the work, which I saw in this. But they go deeper, some of these. Mm -hmm. um, do you get into the symbology of some of the forms? I mean, or, you know, that have been used for uh, no. other... Not cultures really. I mean, I use or? a lot of reference material, <clears throat> especially um, patterns from Islamic um, miniatures okay. and textiles and rugs. So I mean, I'll use, I'll see like a flower shape that I like, and I'll use okay. it. You know, okay. so I'll use forms, and I usually put them together with a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the colors are symbolic to me. But the work is kind of hard to talk about because it's very personal in a way that's hard to explain. Like, um, you wouldn't look at any of these paintings and really be able to tell exactly what the content is sometimes. There's a I lot think, of, yeah. um, so, so generally the shapes, like in the show I had before this last one, I did a series of shields. Yes. And yes. so the idea behind this, they were all like, <clears throat> you know, overly sort of shield shapes. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind them was that my, my kid is now, well, he's 17 now. Yeah. And that was a couple years ago. But we were sort of in that period where it's like, okay, you're not a little kid anymore. You don't want to have anything to do with us. You know, you, yeah. as a parent, you just feel like when they were little, you were their physical protector. Yeah. And now you're not as yeah. in the same way. And they're trying to become the, their own person. Yes. And um, so to me, the shields were kind of a a metaphorical protection that I could yeah, create. Yes. And the show was called Talismanic. So they were like painted talismans to sort of like protect a loved yeah. one when they're out in the world. So they were kind of similar to the sailboats and yeah, a lot. You know, just yeah. the, the thinking was, um, you know, the ideas of protection and creating um, like a magical object that could protect someone. Yeah. And also coupled with the fact that, you know, kids today in the video games. I mean, there's swords and shields and weapons and you know, Oh, that. so, yeah, that's so true. So the shields oh, yeah. are a big factor in, oh, you know, yes. like when you're playing Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. So uh -huh. um, so the shields were a pretty cohesive body of work where they were all shield shapes. Beautiful. Oh, um, I love like um, <clears throat> Ethiopian magic scrolls mm. and a lot of these have eyes, you know, like yeah, the sort of yeah. the watching eyes. Uh -huh. um, there's also something about like using patterns that can confuse evil spirits, like yes. busy stuff, like they will get lost in the patterns and then they can't do their nefarious deeds. So um, I work with maze imagery sometimes. Yeah, yes. So it's not like any one piece you could say like this means this or that means that. Yeah. Um, but they're all kind of 
they're they're very intuitively done. The drawings are in my mind kind of like doodly. You know, they start mm -hmm. not like doodle in a margin of a piece of paper. They're planned doodles, but they kind of change in a way that's similar to me like a formal doodle. Yeah. And um and I try also not to really think about what I'm doing too much mm. while I'm doing yeah, it. I love that. Um, I like to sort of think about it after I've done it a little bit more, but mm -hmm. I don't really want to take away from the experience. But yeah. they're not, and, and it seems weird to say like they're process oriented work because they kind of don't seem like that at all. But in a way, yeah. like the act of sitting and painting is something that I need to do to sort of process my emotions. So I can't like look at them and say, this is what was going on at that moment in my life. I just yeah. know that generally it's been a pretty tumultuous couple of years mm -hmm. and this is the work that came out of me. Oh my God, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, no, that's well said because uh, I think you're, I mean, describing your own personal process that way, uh, it's like your own language, but you let it flow. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't have to overanalyze it. You're just, yeah. that's beautiful. Thanks. And, and it, it feels so good uh, to look at them. And of course, always, I wonder, it has to take such patience, but this is part of your, your mantra and your meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's something to me that's very, um, it's kind of like an athletic experience too, like the hand-eye coordination. Like I always notice when I first sit down to start painting, like I'm slower. Mm. And by the end of the three hours, because I usually paint from seven to ten. Oh yeah. I'm going so much faster. Yeah. And like I'll try it sometimes, you know, because it's gouache, you can't really start an area and stop halfway. You kind of have to finish it because you'll have sometimes a line. Oh, that's what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. So you have to kind of plan it out. So I mean, I'll look at the clock and I'll be like, okay, how long did it take me to do that row of stupid yeah. freaking triangles yeah <laughs> and what time is it and how long do i have and i'm like okay well that one took me half an hour so this one should take me a little bit less because i'm in the group yeah, more yeah. but it is interesting to me also my husband and i've been learning how to meditate and um you know it's all about breathing and yeah. not like trying to control your breath so much as sort of observing your breath but yeah but it's very interesting though the similarities to like real meditation and the painting i'm sure the hand yes. the hand eye coordination to me is really interesting and of course i've been doing this for many years now mm -hmm. and it's just it's a pleasurable part of the process yeah. to know that you're not going to screw it up <laughs> Yeah, no, you're well, I mean, you're, like, yeah, you're well practiced. Yeah, you're really. Yeah, but it shows. There's something that's very gratifying about that, oh, and, sure. and yeah. it's also a very unforgiving medium. So mm. it's not like oil paint where you can paint over it and sand it down and change yeah. it a million times. I mean, it's all one layer, except for some where this is unusual for me. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, painting. There was a painting underneath it that was okay. And now there's a whole other layer on I top. I can see the yeah. And that's not I something I usually did, but um, but generally speaking, I can't really screw it up, or the whole painting will be destroyed. Oh, <laughs> so, no, no, I yeah. just I I find that um, yeah, look, just looking at them, even I mean, you see different things, but it made me think also, and you've touched on this a bit on the patterns mm -hmm. that you you admired in the Ethiopian cloth that, that they use. And I was thinking about where I grew up uh, with um, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. I grew up in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And you'd see these, what they called hex signs on barns. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them were fairly crude and simple. Some were extremely ornate. Mm -hmm. But everything in it was a, a, a symbol of something mm -hmm. to bring uh, good fortune or mm -hmm. ward off mm -hmm. what they considered not good. He <laughs> you know, hex signs. Hex signs, yeah. yeah interesting. And, and, then, and uh, it's a big, there's a big, I don't know if there's, you know, so many barns have been taken down now, but uh -huh. I remember thinking uh, that what you're doing, maybe not on purpose, maybe it's not consciously, mm -hmm. but some of it is, I think, mm -hmm. you're pulling up these these older uh, symbols that mm -hmm. uh, are just ancient and, mm -hmm. and actually sort of remind me of, of uh, even in physics, some of these um, mathematical um, 
forms that are in all of life, mm -hmm. like the flower of life or, mm -hmm. you know, equations that come out in a pattern. And I, I love that too about, this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, well, but, um, yeah. It is something that I think about a lot. And I mean, there is a lot of math and geometry in it. And oh, some yeah. of them are pretty challenging to figure out, like how to get the circle to work right. Yeah. Um, I used to think that because I'm just like a boring white kid who grew up in Memorial, <laughs> that I was attracted to exotic patterns uh -huh, and uh -huh. like I was. Ex I, I really, yeah. I'm not very interested in Western art at all. I'm interested in non-Western art way, yeah. way, way more, yeah. and I love like. Um, visionary work and outsider art and art of the insane and all that yes, stuff to me is way yes. more interesting but yeah. but in terms of the patterns I used to think I was attracted to these exotic patterns because mm -hmm. of me being you know boring white kid <laughs> but um, <laughs> as I learned more and just saw more I was like you know I don't think I'm really I think I'm recognizing something that's within my own culture and within me or within is you. sort of a global thing or a timeless thing mm. and I'm not really appropriating something that doesn't already belong to me. Absolutely. So especially Absolutely. with the feminine tradition of things like quilting and yeah, healing yeah. and you know all that I feel like it's it's I'm, I'm entitled to it as much Absolutely. as anyone. <laughs> you are. So that's part of this whole creative process I think too is it reveals to us something uh, you know usually healing in some way, I, I think. I'm seeing this with a lot of artists I talk with, mm -hmm. uh, saying, you know, similar things, mm -hmm. with an entirely different media and approach and life and all the above, but uh -huh. it's kind of neat to see that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I wanted to ask you, um, I remember seeing uh, that you had done kites, mm -hmm. which I thought were fascinating, again, yeah. the, uh, Tell me uh, what sort of inspired that. You well, there was a show, I cannot remember who organized it now, but it was a number of years ago at this Russ Pittman Park in Bel Air. Okay, oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah it's a cool park. park. And so they let artists come in and do installations in the park. So yes. I, I made a bunch of kites, that was, that was one textile project I did. So okay. I, okay. I sewed a bunch of kites that were kite sized, mm -hmm. you know, traditional kite shape. Mm -hmm. out of sort of nylon-y fabric, you know, kind of tough fabric. Yeah. Um, and they looked like my paintings. I mean, they had yes. patterns and stuff. And they, they were, there were probably about 10 of them, and I picked this big pecan tree. And so all 10 of the kites and their tails were stuck in the tree. Oh, which meant that's that great. My <laughs> long-suffering husband, Colin, had to climb up a huge ladder. Oh, good. Why are these damn kites in this oh huge tree? Gosh. So they were yeah. dispersed pretty well throughout the tree. Yeah. So. I was always interested in kites because to me they're sort of like an interesting em emblem of childhood and yeah. they're kind of challenging to fly, you know, you have to have the right conditions. They can soar high and be, you know, magnificent and glorious or they can crash and yes. burn and, yes. and so it's just an image that I've kind of worked with from time to time and at the latest show, you know, I did another kite and that kite was made out of paper and it was painted but it had um, tails coming out of the face of the kite. Yes, yes. So to me, that was just sort of another added wrinkle of the kites. Like they can do all these yeah. unpredictable. They take unpredictable twists and turns. They can yeah. fly. They can crash, or they can sprout tails in unusual places. <laughs> so, it's interesting yeah, just yeah. just thinking about kites yeah. and what they conjure up. Like you said, childhood memories, and yeah. they catch the wind, mm -hmm. and there were other purposes for them, not mm -hmm. just for fun. Mm -hmm. So those putting, you know, what you put on them, too, mm -hmm. made it even more meaningful to me, mm -hmm. you know, when I saw mm -hmm. them, I was like, oh, sending a message. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there was what... a painting that had a kite with two tails in that show also, okay. you know, so yeah. it was a black kite that had two, two tails oh, yeah. and okay. snaked around. I'm just, you know, I, I'm doing the paintings for a different reason, I think, so mm -hmm. I don't really feel the need to, to I don't go. know, like they're satisfying my needs, and yeah. I like the way they look too, so I don't really yeah. feel a huge impulse to yeah. experiment and try lots of different things. So it's like so. usually a, a two-dimensional surface is, is what speaks to you yes. more than anything. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And I like, I, I paint at a table, flat, you yeah. know, I don't yeah. paint on an easel or on the wall or anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't even usually take them down and look at them or put them somewhere to look at them while I'm painting it. Yeah. I just keep working keep until working. it's done. Um, mm -hmm. 
because it's sort of a different kind of exercise. It's yeah. I don't know how to explain that part of it, but right. it doesn't need to be studied from across the room for hours. I mean, no. occasionally I'll do that if I'm trying to pick a color, because yeah. the color choice is usually pretty like one at a time. Mm -hmm. I tend to do the blacks first mm -hmm. because I'm trying to establish a certain weight in oh. the composition, oh, okay. yeah. and then the colors will just go you know, one at a time after that. Yeah. Occasionally I'll sort of plan a, a palette a little bit ahead of time. Yeah. But, but usually yeah. the color choice is kind of spontaneous. So. Oh, great colors! Oh, just vibrant and uh, the patterns, I mean it's what really makes makes it but the colors you know too did you ever do any with that color i don't recall that but maybe you had at some point not I, really yeah. some of them have less color and more like graphite but mm -hmm. and the colors like i always think about how to me this is really sad work <laughs> like you would look at it and you think it's like happy and colorful and cheerful but but it's uh, not and um it's to me the color is serving to be an uplifting source. Oh, okay. Like okay. it serves a purpose to me, but you wouldn't. And so the end result may look very different to yeah. somebody else than like what I get from it. But and I also like trying to put weird colors together. Like there's sort of that challenge of like yeah. trying to put colors that might not seem like they go together together yeah. and seeing if I can like pull it off. I always like that. So. I think you're probably more experimental than you know. If you you know, it's funny the how we see ourselves but mm -hmm. because uh, I've even seen you put words into the pattern mm -hmm. which you did I think in one piece mm -hmm. of this recent yeah. show and uh, I think there's much more going on here you know <laughs> when you get pulled into each piece mm -hmm. and then you might just be seeing things that you know we all just see what we mm -hmm. think we're wanting yeah. to see but yeah well um, I did use text quite a bit in the past Mm -hmm. um, I did a show, I got a, an HAA grant, um, uh, it was probably 2006 or something, mm -hmm. and it was a, a, a book I did, like I, oh. paint, I, I sewed together, you know, made a, made a handmade book, yeah. and I sewed together um, the pages and painted on both sides of the paper, oh. and the text was all contributed by my kid. So, you know, just the oh. weird things that kids say. Yeah, yeah. Because I've always oh. loved um, illuminated manuscripts, and I love using the gold, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I painted on both sides of the paper, and I also did a lot of um, graphite on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So working on it as a book, like, the images would transfer from one page to the next. Oh, yeah. So some of them didn't have any words, but some of them did. And then um, when I was finished with it, I cut them apart and I had them framed. So they had like a wooden base and they were sandwiched between plexi. So each piece would have, you could walk oh. around it and see both sides. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also if you could put them where there was a little bit of a window nearby, you could see through it because that oh, was good. the Okawara paper that's yeah. pretty thin. Yeah. Um, and so I really liked that. And then I did a show at Lawndale and it was called... Um, three months and 90 days, and I did um, 90 postcard-sized paintings. It made me think of Renata with her, oh, her yes, drawings. Yes. But, um, I had to complete the one painting per day for 90 days. Okay. Oh, and yes. a lot of those had text in them, and that was kind of an exercise on like, you know, can you lay a creative egg every single day for oh, 90 I days know. straight? Yes. And then the three months part where there were three very large paintings that were like 40 by 70 mm -hmm. on paper also, um, that I spent a month on each. Oh. So it was just kind of an, a study of like the difference in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Interesting challenge. Yeah, and yeah. they all had text. A lot of those had text in them, not all of them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's something I've kind of played with from time to time, especially because of my interest in um, illuminated manuscripts, and also I'm a huge reader, so I always just, okay. I love books and reading, uh, yeah. and, you know, so occasionally I, I, I think it's fun to play with words. It's interesting you yeah. said that because, um, you know, writing and reading is, of course, language, but it's like I look at your work and often feel like I'm looking at a language or a, a story. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I mean, because mm -hmm. you would say that about anything, but mm -hmm. it's just the patterns, I suppose, or mm -hmm. the symbology. There's something there that's mm -hmm. almost very primal, mm -hmm. ancient sort mm -hmm. of communication. Mm -hmm. it, well, you yeah. know. 
<laughs> my weird mind going there, yeah, but you know, it's yeah. just kind of cool. Uh -huh. I, I love it. Yeah. Well, I do want to thank you very much for allowing me to come in and see what you do and talk about it. I couldn't wait. It just, <laughs> I think it'll be of real interest to the tribe and beyond. Well, thank you <laughs> and, for coming. I really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, it's yeah. been fun and uh, excited to share this. And I do want to say uh, thank you to the viewers for watching. And please do like, share, subscribe. And we will be signing out here. So thanks so much. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs>